I'd like to ask the nominee, Professor Abraham, that, uh, Mr. Speaker, it, Mr. Chairman, he is one of the two nom people who have been reappointed to the cabinet to the same docket that they were serving previously, the last two years. I want to ask you a question, Professor, that what do you think makes you f feel that you can serve in that docket again? Because why I'm asking that question is because if you look at what happened in the last two months in this country, the, the demonstrations and the kind of thing that happened, in my view, you look like somebody was lost. Your presence was not being felt. Your uh, omnipresence was not being felt, if I may say so. Because you could see abductions were happening, human rights abuses were happening, but the minister's voice was not being heard in that situation. What do you think, what makes you think that you can serve again in the same docket? But the next question is that you have also seen widely, you have been widely accused the last two months or the last one year that you, you've presided over human rights abuses from time you've been appointed CS till last month. Particularly what happened, for example, on 25th of July, 2024. And also during the Azimio demonstrations last year, more than 75 Kenyans lost their lives. And last month also, more than 50 Kenyans lost their lives. So there's a feeling that the national police response to protest is stuck in the old way of doing things. So the question is, to, to what extent do you think ministerial responsibility for the brutality meted on Kenyans by security organs? At what level do you think you can take responsibility for that? What do you ways are you going now to do to, to stop that? So my question is, in spite of all these abuses that have happened, in spite of all the problems that Kenyans have encountered, what is this new idea that you will employ this time if you are approved by this house? Because one of the things we are looking at, Professor, is the chair, is chairman, is the suitability of the person to hold that office. What makes you think you are suitable in spite of all those problems that you have encountered the last two months? Thank you, Chair. Professor, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members. I was in office for 21 months, 623 days. I can account for each and every day of my stay in office. I woke up every day and my focus has been to ensure that our country is safe. I have risen before dawn every day including Sundays and gone to sleep very late simply because of the demands of our homeland security. I believe that I am suitable for reappointment because during those 21 months, during those 6, 23 days, I have been able to keep the country fairly safe, especially in the fight against terror. Previously, we had an escalation around 2021-2022 of terror attacks in northern Kenya and the Pony Enclave. And in the past two years, approximately, we've had stability in northern Kenya and Lamu. I believe I am suitable, Honorable Speaker, because the crime of banditry has been reduced significantly, in my estimation, by more than 75%, even if pockets of insecurity continue to be experienced. And we do know where the gaps are and what needs to be done to even uh, bring uh, this problem to a complete end. Mr. Speaker, I have visited all the 47 counties. Some of the counties numerous times. I've been to Lamu 21 times in 21 months. I've been to Samburu eight times. I've been to Baringo 13 times. I've been to many other counties. And therefore, I have not been lazy. 
I've been diligent and I've conducted myself within the parameters of Article 73, which requires me to conduct myself in a manner that brings honor to the nation and dignity to the office I hold. I have worked with officers at the headquarters, but as I've also sat down in numerous meetings to work with officers at regional, county, and sub-county levels to make sure that we share decision-making processes and decision implementation processes. I believe, Mr. Speaker, the question has been directed to the events of the recent uh, weeks. And I want to respond as follows. That the reason that I didn't talk every day is because the events the Honorable Member is referring to were mainly operational issues. The work of the Minister, the Cabinet Secretary for Interior, as envisaged in Article 245 of the Constitution, is to give the organs of national security that fall under that ministry policy direction and policy guidance and in particular because we are talking about the police. Mr. Speaker, the police is under independent command, Article 245, Paragraph 2. There are only two people who can give the Inspector General of Police directives. First, the Cabinet Secretary for Interior, but only on policy issues. Number two, the cabinet, uh, sorry, the director of public prosecutions in matters and investigations of criminal activities. Other than that, operational matters are handled by the command of the National Police Service, and, and therefore the minister doesn't give operational directives. We have communicated the policy during my time in office, the policy of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration on policing, which includes zero tolerance on extrajudicial killings, zero tolerance on abuse of human rights, and restraints in the use of force. Limited only, the use of force being limited only to cases contemplated in the constitution and the National Police Service Act and the schedule there too in the defense of life of the officer or the life of the people of Kenya. Therefore, it is unfortunate that during a recent uh, uh, protest, we witnessed the death of 42 Kenyans. We also had injuries, 486 civilians and 385 police officers were injured. We had about 1,387 uh, arrests. We had 54 police cars destroyed and 110 motor vehicles belonging to the people of Kenya also destroyed in those protests. And therefore, I want to submit as follows that the operational responsibility of policing lies with the command of the National Police Service. It is my estimation that on a broader scale of things, generally, the police tried their best to protect the country against mobs of criminals, arsonists, and other dangerous people, including those who visited parliament and wanted to kill parliamentarians and other people. The police did their best. And in the event, as it is possible, that any officer went beyond what is allowed in terms of the use of force, 
it is now the work of the independent police oversight authority and other accountability agencies to help the country to bring to closure the issue of justice for excess use of force. I want to submit as follows, Mr. Speaker, that even beyond the police having independent operational command, the issue of the use of firearms by a police officer is individual. If you read the National Police Service uh, uh, Act and the Schedule 6 to that Act, every police officer has individual responsibility on how they use firearms. You cannot, the Inspector General of Police will not be there to tell the police, uh, the, 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 the officer, shoot this one, don't shoot this one. There will be an operational order that will generally guide the police officer. So the accountability of the IG will be on the operational order, which is publicly available, whether that operational order met the constitutional threshold, but the use of force by individual officers is an individual responsibility issue. Other than that, I commend generally those officers who tried their best in very difficult circumstances to help the country come to terms with what happened and hope and will see to it if I am reappointed that the accountability for those who violated the law is pursued conclusively, I submit.